All right, we got the gearbox out. We got the gearbox torn apart. So let's see what we got. Um, I would have shown taking all the screws and stuff out, but that's that's boring stuff. Uh, four across the top, two down in the bottom here, one in the back, one up front here. Let's see, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine screws you got to take out to get the gearbox apart. Okay, so here we go. SEMA standard. Um, first thing I noticed, um, well, actually, first thing I noticed on this gearbox is that the bevel gear has an eight millimeter ball bearing bushing, and then the sector gear and spur gear basically standard solid bushings. Um, I'm assuming they do that so that this the sector gear is probably going to get more, um, there's going to be more torque and more pressure applied to that pulling the piston back. Um, and then they probably put the ball bearing here so that the motor, uh, the bevel gear and everything can spin fast because uh, that's transferring into the sector, or sorry, the spur gear. Um, and then the spur gear spins the sector gear. So if you look on this side, so you got your bevel gear, spur gear, sector gear. So the sector gear, as these teeth, I don't know if you can see it, me pointing at it with my big fat fingers. So these teeth here, as they come around, they grab the teeth on the piston, pull the piston all the way back, and then when it hits this section here with no teeth, away it goes, uh, creates compression or pressure, and launches the BB. So I imagine the that most of the torque, because this is the gear pulling on the piston that's compressing the spring. So the piston sits on there. So you got your piston in here, your spring is like that, these teeth. That pulls that back, compresses the spring. That thing shoots back up in the cylinder and creates pressure. So let me get into the piston here. Um, it's a plastic or polymer, poly, uh, polymer, plastic, I'm not sure exactly what type of plastic it is. It is a plastic piston uh, with a full row of metal teeth. So that is a good sign. So as far as running this setup on a LiPo battery, I wouldn't have any problems doing that. Um, you don't want to run a LiPo battery for a very long time on one that has plastic teeth. Um, a lot of times the ones with plastic teeth will have one metal tooth here at the right towards the end but this is where your sector gear grabs everything grabs it towards the rear and pulls it back to create that compression that launches the bb out the barrel um, lipo batteries get things into motion quickly uh, the discharge rate and everything it's not like a nickel metal hydride battery um, so when you're pulling that trigger, it's whip, it whew, that thing just whips into gear and just goes quick. So if you have the plastic teeth, eventually what's going to happen is this: the first part of these teeth here, they're going to, they're just going to wear down. Um, the gears seem to be pretty decent. So I'm not. Uh, years ago, when I first started playing, a lot of the gears weren't very good quality. They're made out of pot metal. So when you had a battery that had a lot of power, well. 20 plus years ago, a lot of power was a 9.6 volt battery. Uh, everything was running on 8.4. As soon as you put the 9.6, you would literally strip the teeth off your spur gear. Um, and then after you would figure out, oh, my gun's broken, we would, you know, either take it in and have the shop fix it, or, you know, we learned to do it ourselves. Um, we replaced the gear set, reshim the gearbox, all good to go. But then now we have good, decent gears with that plastic piston with plastic teeth, and then those things get stripped off. Um, and again, that was with 9.6 9 volt batteries. So now we're talking LiPo batteries that are 11.1 .1 volt. Um, this setup from just looking at what I'm seeing right now, I would have no problems running a 7.4. 7.4 LiPo, not a problem. And I also wouldn't have a problem running 11.1. Uh, um, I have run this on 11.1 LiPo. I do have an 11.1 LiPo battery for this particular AEG. Uh, but now seeing this for sure, now I'm, I'm glad to know that it has that. Um, so um, plastic, polymer, whatever. Uh, you got a plastic piston, full row of metal teeth. 
Uh, I also have an, an aluminum silent piston head. So you see this little this little knob right here in the middle. Um, and dual O-ring. It's got the main O-ring for your main compression and it's got this little secondary one. I'm not sure how much the secondary one is actually doing, you know, or, you know, how much pressure it's actually helping push, but uh, it is there. So now, here on the cylinder, let me see if you can see this. Let me see if I can shine a light in there and get this up closer to the camera. Let's see if you see it. So way down in there, there is an actual indentation for this part of the piston right here. Piston head, I should say. So basically, the silent piston, because there's an indentation, indentation on the cylinder head, and then there's this part here on the piston head, when it hits, okay, when everything is, is let go and the spring tension goes and this thing flies forward, when it hits the cylinder head, it doesn't make a loud smacking sound. So that's that's good if you're trying if you're like brush hunting and hiding in the brush and trying to trying to stay quiet. Um, if you just rack off one round, you don't hear that smack. It doesn't smack when it hits. I have I've purchased these types of cylinder um, cylinder head or piston heads and the silent cylinders, and I've put those in a couple of my AEGs, and they are holding up pretty good. Um, decent rate of fire. Um, decent FPS and they're, they're holding up pretty good. Uh, so the other thing I noticed way down in here, you're not going to be able to see it, um, ball bearings. So it looks like there's bearings on the on the uh, uh, piston head. I want to keep wanting to call that a cylinder head. That's not the cylinder head. So here the cylinder, standard, it's a you know ported cylinder with a 200 millimeter barrel. I wouldn't expect to see a, a non-ported uh, cylinder. Uh, the only time I've seen non-ported cylinders, or just basically this hole is not there, it's like solid all the way around, is on something with a very long barrel. Um, some AK, you know, AK-47s, I've, I've seen some that weren't, weren't uh, ported. Um, the G3 SG-1s, I've seen them not ported. Uh, just, you know, the barrel, 509 millimeter as far as barrel length, that's, that's pretty long. Standard uh, M4 carbines like uh, three, 363 millimeter barrel, and and a lot of those are are ported. Uh, so this one with a 200 millimeter barrel, definitely ported. Uh, like I said, it's an aluminum silent cylinder head, not piston head. That's the piston head over there. This is the cylinder. There's your cylinder head. Um, standard nozzle, no O-ring, just a standard plastic nozzle there like I said there's no o-ring on that um, one thing I was checking here when I did this I did this a little bit ago uh, just trying to see how the air seal was and here I'm pressing on this I got my finger finger here and I'm pushing this and it's holding the pressure it is holding the pressure that is decent that is a decent seal for an out-of-the-box AEG. Um, I'm, I'm impressed with that. A lot of times I've torn stuff apart, brand new out-of-the-box, and you do that and it just slowly loses pressure. Um, two areas I see the pressure get lost. One is the O-ring on the piston head, and the other uh, time I see air leak, if it's not the piston head, it's the cylinder head. Um, this doesn't seem to be leaking at all. Now, it does leak a little tiny bit. You put your your uh, nozzle on here. Now again, there's no O-ring in here. This is just sliding over, but it's it's pretty tight. There's not a lot of slack in that. But now when I do this, see it going down. So for a uh, AEG that is this is all factory stuff. This is how they built it. Um, not bad. I, I I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't put give this as a as a negative. Uh, maybe in the long run, if you really want a tighter seal, that might help with consistency. Uh, getting a nozzle with a uh, with an O ring. 
Now I do have some nozzles with O-rings. Maybe since I have it apart, um, maybe I can change it. But I do want to get a stock review on this, so I don't want to change anything in this gearbox until I get it on the chrono, and uh, we'll get those we'll get those numbers in here for the, uh, on this video as well, so we know. I, I think it says it does 360 out of the box with a 0.2 BB. We will find out. Uh, spring here, just standard, uh, standard, standard spring. Uh, doesn't look like it's anything special. Uh, and it does have a ball bearing spring guide. Um, this washer, this thing here on the, on the, so there's the bearings, and then there's a washer on the back side of the bearings. It doesn't seem like the washer spins, so I'm not really sure how this, I don't think this is actually, acting like an, a ball bearing setup. Okay, so I see now the whole thing, this whole thing here spins, but it doesn't spin all the way around. It doesn't complete the revolution. It only goes like a quarter turn and then stops. So basically, when the spring is on here, you know, pivoting, it's not actually pivoting all the way around. Um, one thing I'll touch on again, uh, I talked about in the unboxing video, that this was originally advertised as a QBS system. Um, obviously, with this type of spring guide, this is not QBS. Now, this AEG has the QBS receiver, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete this. Um, basically, talking back and forth with where I purchased it, um, we figured out that SEMA was no longer offering the QBS spring guide on this particular model but it does have the QBS receiver. So what I'm going to do, uh, when I get this all back together, I'm gonna put it back to full QBS. So this is the threaded, it's a threaded um, ball bearing spring guide. This basically threads into the back of the receiver. This allows you, uh, the QBS quick buffer system allows you to remove the buffer tube and rear stock off of the AEG and it allows you access to this. Well, this basically screwed in, it's screwed into the receiver, but the part here that the spring sits on is far enough in to be in the gearbox and give you your spring tension. Now you basically unscrew this, pull it, and you can change your spring. Um, I did cover that in, in uh, I think I did, pretty sure I covered that in the unboxing video, but it makes it more convenient to changing springs depending on where you're playing. If you're playing indoor, playing outdoor, outdoor fields sometimes have different FPS rules compared to indoor. Indoor it's usually a little bit slower so if you're shooting 360 with a point two, that may be too fast for some places they may cap you at 350. Uh, with the QBS system you can unscrew it, put a weaker spring in, get it like 330, 340, be within compliance. Um, now this gearbox with this setup, this is more like a quick disconnect or QD spring guide. You can change it, but you have to take the gearbox out of the receiver, which, you know, if you're in the field or at the field, now you got to find a place to do that and tear apart your, you know, tear your stuff apart right there in an unfamiliar place. I, I never liked working on the guns there. If anything happened, we would always have extra AEGs. We would trade off whichever one was broken. Here, use this, and then... You know, when we get home, we would start working on stuff. Uh, standard tappet plate, nothing special. Uh, just your standard plastic tappet plate. Um, so, I think I did cover this. So, we got 8 millimeter bearing slash bushing. Uh, bearing on the bevel gear, bushings on the sector gear, and um, spur gear. Now, getting into the gearbox. Um, looking at low resistance wiring. Uh, this is not your standard wire. This particular one is wired to Dean's. So if you're running Tamiya plugs, you're going to have to run an adapter. I would recommend getting batteries with the with the Dean's connectors. Um, better, better connection and uh, less resistance. So a lot of low resistance wiring harnesses and stuff are probably going to be Dean's connectors. Um, so one thing I just want to look in here because I wasn't really... I wasn't 100% sure 
because when it was all put together and you pull the trigger, you cannot hear anything. You cannot hear anything. But if you look, I think you can see it right there. Micro switch. And this is a little MOSFET trigger board in here. Something that's it's SEMA's own MOSFET. This is not programmable. I can't do three round burst or anything like that. Um, but it does have a micro switch. So running a LiPo, again, uh, shouldn't have a problem running a LiPo. Now, how long this micro switch is going to last, I don't know. Uh, it does look like there's a little Phillips screw here. And it looks like this may be replaceable. Now, I don't know if you can replace the switch separately or if SEMA is just going to say you have to replace the whole board. Um, I don't know. If if you could replace just the micro switch, mm, maybe it would be good to order one and just keep one on hand. You know, and then if, if the time comes, um, maybe have to take the trigger board out, take the screw out, and desolder it. I don't know if it's soldered in or just screwed in with um, contacts on it. Um, the other thing here, there's another little wire that comes off the back side. This little plug here, it comes off the other side here. I don't want to tip this because I still, I got my shims back in here and I don't want the gears to, you know, fall out and have to reshim this because the shims are right where they were originally. Um, this little wiring harness here, this has, again, this has the tracer hop-up unit. So this plugs into that and it's powered by the battery that you plug your AEG into. Uh, the tracer hop-up does work. Um, I will see if after we get the chrono, uh, the chrono numbers, I'll see if I can get the camera to pick up the tracer in action. Um, I've tried to do it with a separate tracer unit in the past and the camera just doesn't pick it up. Uh, I know the GoPro doesn't pick it up, but I have a couple different camera choices I can try and we'll see if we can get, uh, we can see the BBs lit up coming out, coming out of the end of the barrel on this thing. But, um, yeah, so, and then the, you know, the gearbox here, I'm also looking at the shell. Um, and this actually looks like it's pretty, pretty decent, um, pretty durable. You know, up here, there's, there seems to be an adequate amount of material here. Um, way back in the day, again, 20 plus years ago, the gearboxes, uh, we would start upgrading stuff, and I would notice that with the upgraded springs and stuff that we were putting in to get more FPS and different gears and motors and batteries, the front of the gearbox here would split. It would basically crack right here, right there, or right here, or both. I've actually seen, I've known some guys that put some really, really crazy, um, really crazy springs in thinking they were going to make a, a DMR, you know, and putting like an M160 spring in there. And this whole front piece here was completely separated from the rest of the gearbox. Or the other thing I would see is the cylinder head would shatter. It would just be disintegrated in a million little pieces because they were using the, uh, the polymer or plastic cylinder heads, which I don't recommend doing that if you're going to start doing major FPS and trying to reach out and touch someone long distance like a sniper. Um, there's a lot of sniper rifles now on the market that weren't in the market back, weren't on the market back when I started playing Airsoft. Um, but if you want to build your own, I would, I would suggest making sure that you have a reinforced gearbox, if you're using the right gears. Uh, I would definitely use a piston with a full row of teeth, uh, especially if you're pushing a ton of uh, uh, a major spring, a 160, a 150, you know, whatever. You're trying to get, you know, 550 FPS on, on a long-range rifle. Um, I'm, I'm guilty of not having metal teeth on my DMR, but my DMR is not done. I'm still trying to turn my G3 SG-1 into a DMR. Uh, and I have a box full of parts here that eventually I'll get to. But right now, I just wanted to get this get this review done, get this out there. So gearbox wise, I'm 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 impressed with what I see. Like I said, I don't. This is not. These are not pop metal gears. They advertise them as being laser cut gear. Whatever. Uh, just cut the teeth however you like, as long as they're strong. I don't care. Um, so we got decent gears. Uh, also, one other thing I noticed on the gearbox. It's a little. I guess it's part of reinforcing the box. Is this little collar. 
right here where the motor goes through. I guess this is supposed to, as this motor is tweaking and moving, it's supposed to keep it more steady and supposed to give it a little more stability. Um, I've never seen the bottom of the gearboxes break. Um, I've seen the threaded holes strip out down here with people over tightening the the um, the pistol grip or motor motor grip. But um, yeah, so I'm not uh, I'm not upset at all with what I see here. Um, I think this is a I think it's a decent so far factory out of the box. I think it's a decent setup. Um, decent gears. Looks like a reinforced gearbox. We have a micro switch MOSFET unit here. Good for running lipo. Everything is kind of leaning that direction. Um, so I'm gonna get this thing put back together. Like I said, I'm I'm switching this. And one thing when I was talking back and forth with tech support, um, they were telling me look look down the back of the receiver and tell me what you see. So I'm telling them what I see and and showed them a picture and he said no that's the that's the correct that's the correct. Uh, this isn't really focusing on it. I don't know if you can see it. He goes, they go, oh, that's the, there you go. Oh, that's the correct one. It's supposed to have one single slot. You got to use a big flat blade screwdriver. Okay, well, yeah, but this wouldn't come out the receiver. And now I know why. You can see, you know, you shine your light in there. When I sent them the picture, they go, no, no, that's the correct one. Well, no, it wasn't. But anyways, so the only thing that's not going back factory because I don't want to tear the gearbox apart twice is this. I'm getting rid of this and I'm going back to full QBS. Um, so I may I may repurpose this in a different gearbox. I'm gonna hold on to it. It is a you know it is a ball bearing spring guide. I'm gonna look and see if I can figure out why it doesn't fully spin. Um, but that'll be that'll be for another video. I'll maybe I'll do a gearbox build and uh, You'll probably see this this spring guide being being repurposed in in one of those videos, but um so I'm going to get this all back together. Um, get it all put back together. We're gonna get the whole AEG put back together. We're gonna get this gearbox back in the receiver, and um, see if we can get some chrono videos. And I'm gonna also we're gonna get the numbers. We're gonna see what it's uh, what it's putting out as far as FPS with 0.2 BBs. I'll, I'll use the 0.2s. We'll see what it's doing for FPS. We'll see what it's doing for rate of fire. And we will see if we can get the camera to pick up any of the tracer BBs. So let me get this thing put back together and get to that.